here. Thank you so much for joining me for this fun and challenging full length Pilates performer class. Today we're going to be layering on our exercises and doing some things that are hopefully challenging for us. Um, but to begin, I have my headrest up. On my machine, my red spring is medium and my blue spring is light. I have one medium and one light spring, one red and one blue spring on. But if you find this is too challenging for you, please feel free to drop it down to one red spring. Also, something about my straps is that I work with my straps typically a little shorter than most people, and we are going to want them a little bit shorter today for uh, some of the exercises, just that we don't have to hold on to the ropes and yank funny. If we can hold on to the handles instead, that would be great. If you have a machine where you're not able to uh, adjust your ropes, you could always try putting a little knot in it uh, for just this class if you'd like to, to try to start with a shorter loop. The choice is totally up to you guys, but I start with a shorter loop and that's what I created the class based upon. My foot rests up. I'm going to begin by lying on my back. I'm going to find my handles. Just hold on to them. There's no tension on the machine. I'm just going to find a nice neutral spine to begin. Now from there, I'm going to extend my arms up. See how far back my arms are with the spring or the carriage of the bumper? That's where I always I always keep my um my straps here, but I know a lot of people don't like that. Now while I'm here without moving the carriage, I can sort of press gently into the handles and spiral into my pinky blade edge more than my pointer finger or thumb part of my hand. And I can really feel an engagement underneath my arms, and I can really feel the wrap of my ribs. While we're here, go ahead and really find that deep sink of the belly button to the spine and find that nice neutral sacrum. The sacrum's the tailbone to the two backs of the hips. From there, I'm going to pull my handles with my underarms or my lats, not my legs, and see if I lift my legs, the carriage doesn't move, right? And I'm bringing them over my sternum 12th rib, and then I'm going to release. And then exhale to pull my hands over my sternum 12th rib and release. One more. Again, I'm giving a little bit more weight to my pinky blade edge and release. Now, let's pull our hands out. Bring one leg to tabletop, bring the other leg to tabletop. Now, we're going to do our footwork with our hands in the straps today, keeping that nice squeeze on our underarms or lats, the wrap of the rib, really maintaining that strong box of the body. I'm going to do the single leg stretch for my footwork first. So single leg work first. I'm going to extend my left leg and pull it back in. And extend my right leg and pull. Now left leg. Now my part of my foot is connected to my left leg at all times. And now part of my left foot is connected to my right leg at all times. So I'm really drawing everything in towards the midline. I'm maintaining your breath. I'm going to inhale as I press my leg up and exhale as I pull it back in. Imagine that you're moving through mud. <sighs> Make sure your legs are stopping at tabletop. I know it's more comfortable to draw your legs in past tabletop, but we really want to challenge the body here. One more. Now extend the legs up to the ceiling. Let's do some nice scissors. We're going to do reciprocal scissors, so our legs are going to pass mid-kick. The most important thing here is to keep our body completely still. Really section cut those shoulder blades down to the mat. Our hands should be wider than our shoulders, so more in line with the pulleys behind us. Eight, two more, nine, and ten. Legs up to the ceiling, bring them back down to tabletop. Now let's extend our legs out to working level parallel and pull back in for five. And extend it parallel, pull back in for four. And extend, pull in for three, and here's two. And now we're going to add on for the next five. I'm really starting to feel it in my underarms. I don't know about you guys. So I'm going to extend my legs out, turn out to Pilates C, turn back to parallel, and pull my legs in. Now extend, Pilates C, parallel, and pull. Extend, Pilates C, parallel, and pull. Here's four. And here's five. Now extend your legs up to the ceiling. Really maintain that squeeze over the sternum. Now lower your legs down 
and lift for 10. We're doing this with a pointed foot first, or a gentle point. I'm not really strongly pointing my feet. Two more on here, and then we're gonna flex our feet. Now flex, and lower, and lift. Here's two, three, four, and five. Keep your feet up to the ceiling, look at your toes, make sure you're pulling back your big toe and your little toe equally, and now point your feet to a demi-point position where your toes are still pulled back, and then point. Now pull your toes back to the toe of my whole foot when I go to the demi-point, and then press through the heel. Now press to the demi point and point your toes, pull your toes back and flex. Now we have 10 of these, and here's four. We're just articulating the feet. Six, seven, eight. Find that wrap of the rib, the deep sink of the belly button. Draw your feet to the tabletop. Relax your arms down, so hold on to your straps. Separate your feet onto the arches, the distance of your foot bar. Now we're going to windshield wiper the feet to one side. My back ribs are staying completely on, but my hip lifts slightly, and I'm going to pull it back with my obliques. Then I'm going to go the opposite direction, and you can't see, but this hip is floating slightly while my ribs are still on the mat, and I'm going to pull back. <sighs> Try to find this movement with the breath. Don't let your knees get too wild. We want to keep the upper part of the body stable on the carriage today. Now, here comes the part of class that I think is the hardest. So, <laughs> let's go ahead and do this. We're going to reach our arms up out of our sternum twelfer, bring our legs to tabletop. Now we're going to curl up and hover our feet off the mat and extend our right leg. Leave it there and uncurl. Now curl up, extend your left leg to meet it. Leave both legs there and uncurl. Now one, curl up both legs, and now lower, draw your knees to tabletop. Now the left leg extends as you curl up, leave it there, and down, and right leg, and down, and both legs curl up, and come down in tabletop. Now right leg single stretch, and lower. Left leg single stretch, and lower. Working level curl up, lower, and draw into tabletop. One more. And then when we curl up, we're doing the hundreds. So curl up, extend left leg, and lower. Curl up, extend right leg, and lower. Now curl up, stay there, and begin pumping. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Make sure your chin's not crunching into your chest. Make sure you're squeezing your legs together. Squeeze under your arms and your lats, and really reach for the foot bar. Flex your feet if you want. Diamond your legs. Hook your legs in parallel, extend them to the ceiling, tabletop, tabletop frog. These are all acceptable. Now, but wherever you are, lower your heels an inch. Final one, lower your heels another inch. Float your hands up to the ceiling, draw your knees to the tabletop, rest your head on your shoulders. Gently place your feet on the foot bar, lower your arms. Take a quick break. We're about to move on. Before we do anything, don't move the carriage with your uh, feet on the foot bar. They're just gonna rest there gently. If you need to place them on the top, you should. We're gonna draw our elbows down to the mat, squeezing our bicep into our ribs, and bring our arms to a 90 degree bend. One leg to tabletop, other leg to tabletop. Squeeze under the arms. Now, press your hands down to tap the mat, and flip them back up to 90, and tap, and lift, and tap, and lift. Here's four, we're going to 10, five, and then we're gonna do my favorite exercise. My trainer, Katie Rowley, taught me this, and I love it. It's kind of like a game. I hope you enjoy it too. And here's 10, now stop at 90. Now without moving the carriage, imagine you're sliding your arms up a wall, and then sliding back down. Again, you're not moving the carriage. So the trick is, your arms are extended at an angle, but you want to keep the same pressure in your straps the whole time, and tap your elbows and lift. You're still squeezing your biceps into your ribs. Oh, my legs came past my 90 degree mark, because it was comfortable. Go ahead and check your legs. 
Two more. Now on 10, stay up at the top and lower your arms for five and lift. Squeeze under the arm, don't allow your shoulders to creep up to your ears. So really think of sliding your shoulder blades down your back the whole time, right? Now the fifth one, pause at the top. Bring your arms up the width of the carriage. Give me more pinky blade edge. So lift your pointer finger and your thumb off the um, handle and then squeeze that pinky blade edge into your hips and float back up to the V. So we're narrowing the V and we're separating the V. And narrow and separate. Here's two more. One more. Now, float your arms out to the T, palms up so you have all your weight in your pinky blade edge. You're not flat down, you're hovering slightly in your periphery. Now bring the pinky blade edge in and open for one. Pinky blade, blade edge, pinky blade, two. Here's three, here's four, and here's five. Now, bring your biceps into your ribs, squeeze those elbows in. Your palms are up, but the top of your hand is near your shoulder. Why not touch? Right? But we want it yearning for your shoulder. I'm going to draw my knees in tight as long as I'm not tucking my tail. So you can draw your feet in wherever you can do it without tucking your tail. We're going into coordination, but this coordination is going to have a super fun twist. Please feel free to rest your head, neck, and shoulders in between every rep. I'm going to leave my head, neck, and shoulders up the entire time, but please do what's best for your body. If you can no longer lift your head, neck, and shoulders, please leave them down for this exercise. Inhale, exhale, press your arms out to hover on the mat, curl up, and extend your legs at the same time. Now turn your legs out to Pilates V, and now be your heels for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, up for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, to the ceiling without tucking the tail, and down, 1, oh my gosh, sorry, <laughs> 2, 3, 4, 5, turn your feet back to parallel, draw them in, and bring your arms back so your, your uh, hands are to your, shoulder, your uh, shoulders. Inhale, exhale to press out. Turn your feet out to Pilates feet. We're going to cross at the thighs for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up for five, four, three, two, one. Down, two, three, four, five. Come back to Pilates feet. Come to parallel, then pull in and draw your arms in. Now, inhale, exhale, curl up. Flex your feet in tiny walks. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up for five, four, three, two, one. Down for five, four, three, two, one. Point your feet and pull it in. Arms in. Three more. The same, the first two are the same. <sighs> Turn it back to place, begin beat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up for five, four, three, two, one, down, five, four, three, two, one, parallel, pull, arms, <sighs> press, turn it out, one, eight, uh, thighs, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up for five, four, three, two, one, down, one, two, three, four, five, Pilates G, parallel, pull, release your arms, now, giant walks or scissors are next with flex feet, Press it out, flex your feet, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Parallel, pull, draw your hands in, rest your head and your shoulders, rest your feet. Go ahead and take a really nice breath real fast. Drop your head rest. We're going to bridge. It is my recommendation that we all embarrass ourselves today by bridging on our toes. It is much harder to maintain the pull into the carriage by bridging on the toes. If this is not for you today, you can bridge on your heels. It is more hamstring work, or you can bridge on the ball of your feet, which I, I find to be a more front of the leg and back of the leg work. But the toe is more front of the leg work the back of the leg work, I find on my body personally. I'm gonna platform my hands down by the side, slight bend in my elbows, my palms are flat, my shoulder blades are nice and wide. Since we've already warmed up, hopefully it's much easier to maintain that neutral spine here without the help of the headrest. We're gonna inhale, exhale, and print our spine, tuck our tail, or 
articulate up. Try to drive those knees over the footboard and articulate down. Oh, good morning, hamstring, hamstrings. Inhale, exhale. Take your tail, pull it up. And articulate down. When you go up, you can see your knees, so try to make sure they're not going out or in on each other. You want to maintain a perfect number 11. Try not to keep your knees wider than your sits bones. Now stay here. Now press out. You might have to adjust your feet a little bit like I am. And here's two. We're going to sit. Or five. Five is my magic number today. Three. Really squeeze the hamstrings. Four. And five. Now hold it in at the bottom with your uh, tail, with your tailbone, hamstrings, and articulate down. Oh my gosh. The toe is so hard, right? We're going to separate our feet to a wide Pilates V to the outside of the foot bar. Platform your hands down by your side. Try to think of engaging your hamstrings, or hamstring, um, hamstring, so at hamstrings already to keep the carriage in at the bumper. Now, instead of articulating up, we're going to act like there are two balloons on either of our hip bones. We're going to float our hip up and float them back down in a hinge bridge. So, no articulation, hinge it up. <sighs> Drive your knees over your toes or over the foot bar and lower. And tap and exhale to lift. And lower. Make sure your ribs aren't flaring. Exhale to lift. Now press up for five. <sighs> Try to track your knee over your big toe to protect your knee. Here's three. Here's four. And here's five. Keep the carriage under the bumper. Hinge bridge down. Extend your legs up to the ceiling. Walk your hands up behind your legs. Go ahead and lift your tail slightly. Flex and point your feet. Lower your feet. Come off to the side. We're going to put our long box on. For this portion of the exercises, I suggest a sticky mat. Because we're going to be doing some single arm work while we're lying on our stomachs. And we don't want to be slippy. So I'm going to place this right in the middle. I'm going to change my spring tension to one red spring, one medium spring. So I'm going to get rid of my blue spring or my light spring. I'm going to place my closest hand on the foot bar and the hand furthest away on the foot bar. Swing one leg up, swing the other leg up. I'm going to place right at my sternum 12 rib or bra strap at the edge of the box. My hands are nice and wide on the foot bar. My elbows aren't winging up high. For me, my elbows are almost right at the top of the box as well. I'm going to look down. I'm going to squeeze my inner thighs together, draw my belly button up and in, draw my ribs together. I'm going to press out on one. And as I pull into the bumper with stray arms, I'm going to slide my shoulder blades down my back, come up into a swan. Press out on three and on four. And I'm going to press up, pull up with straight arms into a swan, press out with straight arms, and bend my elbows in. I'm going to press out. Pull up, press down, and in. Here's four. Now, what I'd really like for you to see here is you can feel your shoulder blades sliding down your back because of the pressure of the foot bar into the meaty part of your hand. So go ahead and press out. Really feel your shoulder blades sliding down your back, your shoulders away from your ears. Now, make have your glutes and hamstrings do the work and flutter your legs very gently, very slowly and softly in swimming. Breathe again. In for five and out for five. Two more. In for five and out for five. Belly button seven and wrap your ribs. One more. Now, Put the weight in your right hand. Don't allow your shoulder blades to move. Lift your left hand and lower. Weight your left hand. Don't allow your shoulder blades to move or body to move. Right hand lifts and lowers. One more time to each side. Left hand lifts and lowers. And right hand lifts 
and the lowers. Stop your legs. Come on in. <clears throat> now, I have to push slightly away from my foot bar to do this, but I'm going to bring my hands to the middle, over my middle spring. Or if you only have four springs, in between the two middle ones. Now from there, I'm going to try to look down again. And now, we're going to do tricep presses. So I'm going to press out and come in. What I don't want to do is press out and jerk. I want to press out resisting the spring tension and come in resisting the spring tension. And press out resisting and in resisting. Five. Belly button up and in. Squeeze your glutes. Don't tighten your hips. You got to maintain a glute squeeze and a hamstring lift the entire time. So you don't tighten the hips. Two more. Now come back in. Don't release your hands. Take your left hand. You can place it on the small of your back or genie arm it on the front of the box. Whichever one you think helps keep your shoulder blades the flattest. Press up halfway and in, and halfway, and in. We don't want to pop into the shoulder. That's why we're only going out halfway. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Give you a little bit more weight in the pinky blade edge on the foot bar. Now, place your left hand down. Put your right hand on the small of your back or genie arm on the front of the box, pressing in. And now press out halfway, and then. Oh my gosh, this arm's so much weaker. Oh, three. This is not pleasant. Four and five. Oof. Come all the way in. Both hands on the foot bar. One foot comes off, other foot comes off. Furthest hand, closest hand. Now I'm going to remove my sticky mat. If you need, if you need your sticky mat there, you should keep it. But I'm going to go ahead and remove it. And I'm going to change my box to the short box position. I'm going to drop my foot bar all the way down. From there, I'm going to come onto my box in a kneeling position. I'm going to place my feet on the standing platform. I'm going to come on to my elbows on the box. Now, if I want to come to a quadruped position, I'm pretty far to the front of the box. I feel unstable. I can slip, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk my hands back to where I feel stable and press out the carriage to hopefully make a quadruped position where my knees are still attached with the carriage, but I feel much safer. You can play with it however you want, but try to find a true quadruped position. If you have a mirror, take a look. Belly up and in, pull the carriage apart with your shoulder blades. Now, let's do a couple of knee hovers to begin. So when you inhale, exhale, squeeze under my arms, keep my shoulder blades away from my ear, and hover my knees an inch. And lower. We're just going to do three here. And then we're going to hold the knee, knee hover, so that'll be fun too, right? <laughs> and lower. Now one more. Now see in here, saw your shoulders and pull them back out for five. And here's four. Keep the knee hover. Two. One. And now keeping your, your shoulder over your elbow, press it out to a Plank and pull it in for five. Press and pull for four. Press and pull for three. And two. And on one, stay out there. And now pike in the hips. Don't press back so far you lose the abs. You want to keep a slightly rounded position so that you're really working the abs the whole time. Press out and pike. Ideally, our ears would be between our biceps, but given our elbows on the box, it's really hard to do here. So we're going to stay at the pipe. We're going to hug our knees. Now we're going to water weight. So we're going to press out on one, pike on two, drop the knees on three, press out on one, pike on two, drop the knees on three. One more in this direction, and then we're going to reverse. And now pike, press out to the plank, keeping that nice squeeze under your arm the whole time. So you're not popping into your shoulders. I'm not gonna lie. When I originally did this class, and now rest your knees. Go ahead and sit back and find a nice stretch over the top of the box if you're able to. 
I'm going to toss my feet are on the platform. I wanted to do 10 water wheels, five in each direction. I was like, ooh, that was way too many. Especially because we're going to do another set. So, guys, here's the deal. We're going to add on here. If you are comfortable doing it on your, on your forearm, you should. Please understand, it's much more shoulder heavy on your forearms. But if you have wrist problems, it's much harder on your hands. Try to think of putting more weight into the pads of your fingers, like a little hand spider, with only five legs, uh, than crushing right into the meaty part of the palm of your hand to alleviate some of the pressure on your wrist joint. Also, if you would like an additional challenge, you can step back to your foot bar so your feet are hovered up a little bit higher. So I'm gonna come here. I'm still in a nice plank position or a nice quadruped position. I'm holding this right here. Oh, I'm gonna bring my wrist underneath my shoulder. And now I'm gonna saw for five, four, three, two, one. Hold that underarm with your shoulders over your wrist and press out for five and pull. Four. Now you can have your feet in any position that you like. I like to have my feet in Pilates V, but some people like their feet in a narrow parallel. Press out, no pipe. Now, especially here, make sure you're keeping your weight forward rather than just pressing your heels, your hips back over your heels, because that's going to get rid of a lot of the ab work that you're feeling. Think of round back elephant. Here's two. See, it's much easier to get your biceps by your ears here. And, then, and now, pull the carriage in. Now, water wheel, press out one. Pike on two, quadruped on three. Uh, plank, pike, quadruped, plank, pike, quadruped and reverse. Pike, plank, quadruped, pike, quadruped. Plank, plank, quadruped. Carefully walk one knee down and then the other knee down. And go ahead and sit back over your box again for a moment. Go ahead and come off to the side of your carriage. We're going to uh, put four to five springs on our machine. We're doing short box. Just exercises one to three. Round back, flat back, side bend. I'm going to do my safety strap and yank to make sure it's properly attached. And we come to sitting down on my backs. To keep our shoulders away from our ears today, I was hoping that we could put our, hair, our hands in a uh, prayer position, press them into each other, and squeeze under the arms. No. When we press them into each other, think of tweezing like a small acorn at the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. So press them in and it'll flatten and widen across the front and the back and squeeze under the arms to pull the shoulders away from your ears. I have my thumbs actually attached to my sternum. I'm going to go ahead and place my feet underneath the safety strap. I'm going to make sure I have a hands width from my tailbone to the back of the carriage and I'm going to separate my feet and press them in to the strap. My knees are bent here, but you'll know if you press. So try not to press, but we're not gonna move the carriage today if you're used to that. Oh, sorry. There we are, in the prayer position. So, think a spine stretch and round four looking in at your thighs. Now, without moving anything else other than your body, articulate back. And hold it and articulate up. We're trying not to use our legs here. We're really trying to isolate the abdominals. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze under the arms. Find that wrap of the ribs. Go back an inch further and up. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Can you go back an inch further? Three. 
Three more like that last one. And here's three. Keep that bottom rib, top of the hip connection so you don't lose that nice T-shaped curve. We have two more. Squeeze under the arms. Don't crunch your, chin, your chest. Now this next one is where it's super handy to have a mirror near you. I'm constantly wanting to arch my back in flat back. And when I'm not arching my back, I want to round in my back. So if you can look over and, and see when you stack your shoulders over your hips, draw your ribs here, draw your belly button up and in, reach your arms hopefully by your biceps. If this is not accessible to you, try to reach it where the wall and the ceiling meet. If this is also not accessible to you, reach to the front of your sternum to fall through. Flip your palms up though, so you're squeezing under the arms and pulling the shoulder blades flat and wide down the back. Having a nice loose collarbone. My palms are facing towards each other, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the mirror. See, I already wanted to arch my back, and I'll pull it up and in. I'm gonna look my head straight up, I'm gonna lift my biceps up further because when I did that, I wanted to lean my biceps further near my nose. Inhale to press it back, take a look at the mirror, Exhale to lift it up. Now, when you lift, squeeze the glutes to help lift you up. And hinge slightly past stacking your shoulders over your hips. So make sure you're not arching your back to come out of the hip flexors. Try not to use the safety strap too much. Try to stay attached. Try to keep your feet attached to the standing platform. Squeeze your glutes and lift. Imagine you're between a panini press. One more. Take a look at the mirror, make sure you get lazy. Now, we're gonna side bend towards the right, reaching both hands for the ball on the ceiling knee. And squeeze it up. And to the left, leaving that right hip down, and then squeeze it up. Now, think of your obliques on the opposite side of where you're bending, like a pulley system, and you should pull you back up. And to the left, Pull, and to the right, and pull, and to the left, and pull. Now, release your arms, give it a little shake. Go ahead and carefully release your foot from the safety strap and come off to the side. From there, we're going to change our springs. We're going to lift up our foot bar first. It's easier to add the springs like that. I'm going to lift the foot bar up to my middle position, if that's not available to you, to your foot, uh, your footwork position. I'm going to add, or I'm going to take off all of my springs, or take off every spring, and what we want to leave on is one medium, or one red, and one light, or one blue. We're going to do chest expansion, and knee stretch, and then we're going to go ahead and do a long back stretch series since we've already been working on bridging. I'm going to bring my thighs to my carriage. What I don't want to see is I don't want to wedge my knee in there and then be unable to straighten up all the way. So see, if I, if I stack my shoulders over my hips and my hips over my knees, for me personally, my shoulder, my knees are a little bit away from the shoulder block, so I'm not wedging them under there but I'm using the shoulder block as tactile feedback to make sure that I'm maintaining the alignment of my body. It is a red and blue, so if it's too heavy, we'll try the first two with our hands and the handles, and then we can choke up where we would for a thigh stretch if you would like that as an option. So go ahead and check in your mirror if you have one. Make sure that everything is stacked. Pull your hands back towards the foot bar, squeezing under your arms, reaching your fingertips down towards your springs. Look to the right, center, left, center, and release. Now, press it back. Look to the left, center, right, center, release. If you felt like maybe you could do it with a bit of a challenge and your shins weren't floating off of the carriage and you were able to maintain that stacked body position, Go ahead and put your handles on the bracelets, choke up gently your tape or the metal loops, hold on to everything like a stinky sock, and then pull back and go right 
center, left, center, release, and pull back. Go left, center, right, center, release. Check your alignment at any time like I just did. Right, center, left, center, release, and pull back for left, center, right, center, release. Now for those of you who did not choke up on the straps, you may want to do so for, uh, for thigh stretch. So you get a little bit more tension. My hair just slightly away from the bumper right now. That's fine. I'm going to keep my body in a straight line just like flat back, but leveling up. And I'm going to feel a nice thigh stretch here. Go ahead and check in the mirror, make sure everything's in line, and float back up. If you can do this without raising your arms, try it again. Keep your shins on the mat. Don't raise your arms. Look in the mirror. Ooh, that looks good. And come back. Stack your shoulders over your hips, your hips over your knees, and one more like this. Now, if you'd like to add on, let's do it. We are going to do a slight chest lift in the thigh stretch. So if you'd like to stay in just the thigh stretch, you're welcome to. Flat back, hinge back, and lift your chest. And come back to the thigh stretch first, and then float up. And you're going to come through the thigh stretch, then extend. And then come to thigh stretch, and then float back up. One more. If you can't hit the thigh stretch both times, this exercise is not for you yet. Thigh stretch, it will be soon. And thigh stretch, and come up. Now sit back on your heels, peg your straps, rest your head on your headrest, and reach your arms along on the frame for a child's pose. Take a couple nice deep breaths here, and walk your right hand over your left, getting a little bit of a side, uh, side stretch. Ooh, I'm having trouble getting words out today. Now walk your hands back through center, and bring your left hand over to your right hand for a side stretch on the other side. Bring your hands back through center. Now one hand at a time, walk yourself back, coming up into our articulation around our back to lift up and sit up tall. On long back stretch, it's where you put your hands on the back and you press the carriage away from the bumper, giving the nice chest, check and peck, chest and peck stretch as well. If you are not comfortable with this, you can come to the side of your machine with your fingers facing out and do just tricep presses here. Don't let your legs do it, let your arms do it. So, if you're comfortable with leveling up from that exercise, we're going to leave one medium, one light spring, or one red, one blue spring on, and we're going to come to sitting on the foot bar. Right now, my knees are over my heels. I'm gonna walk my knees and my heels away just a couple inches, place my hands on either side of my high knee, very close, they're touching, and I'm going to slide off. All of my fingers, including my thumb, are facing my upright to the back of my reformer. I'm tweezing the bottom tips of my shoulder blades, and I'm going to tricep press for four, three, two, one. If you're comfortable with this, walk one foot out in front of the, the head rest, or shoulder block, the other foot out in front of the shoulder block, maintain this position, and tricep press for four, three, two, one. Now, if you're comfortable with this, let's add on. Dip in your tricep press, press the carriage out, tuck your tail, articulate up, and then pull it back in with straight arms to that hinge position. Now tricep dip, don't sit on the carriage, press, your, press out, articulate up into a flat back bridge, and come back. One more in this direction. If at any time you feel this is too much for you, pull yourself back to sit on the foot bar. Otherwise, we are going to tuck our tail, articulate up, press the carriage out, then hinge at the hips to hover our legs off the mat, pull the carriage into the bumper, and press up, and press out, and down, and in. A lot of tricep work today, right? 
that was preparing us for this exercise. And up. And now, carefully, walk yourself back or pull yourself back and sit on the foot bar. Pull one arm across your body. Pull that elbow behind your head. You can sit on the side of your carriage if you're more comfortable. Pull the other arm across your body. Pull that elbow up behind the head. Reaching down the center of your back, down your spine. Oh, really shake it out. Place your hands on the foot bar and carefully step off to the side before releasing. So, let's move on to some side work. I'm going to sit on my carriage. I'm going to put one heavy spring on. I have used a heavy spring, yeah, huh? Heavy spring on my machine is one green. We are going to do kneeling hip lifts. So if you would like pads for under your knees for this series, because you will use them frequently if you would like them, please find one. A rolled up towel, a rolled up yoga mat, an actual little foam pad that you use for your knees, the skinny part of a little foam wedge, it's all good. I'm going to stack my knees. My top shin is going to be pressing against the shoulder block. For my body personally, when I press up to the kneeling side stretch, if I have both knees stacked against the um, shoulder block, I can't go anywhere. So I get this weird, awkward position with my body. I'm going to line my knees up with the shoulder block. I don't want them too far in front. I'm going to line my hand up with my knees, or maybe a little bit in front, but I don't want to twist. I'm going to flip my palm up on the top of the shoulder block where my knees are. I'm going to squeeze in with my lat or my underarm, drawing my ribs together, drawing my belly button in, and pulling my shoulder blade down my back. Now from there, I'm going to squeeze my glutes to sit up and bring my arm to a T and sit it back. Now, does my carriage go in and out of the bum or something? Yeah, absolutely. And if this is the first time you've done this exercise, can you expect your carriage to go further? Yeah, because it's way more underarm work than you think it's going to be. It's way more lat work, and we've done a lot of lat work. And now press it up. And back and tap. And now press it up, shoulder blade down your back, draw the belly button up and down, grab the ribs, and lower. Whoop, that last one got it really far away. From there, I'm going to come to a quadruped position, again with the, the knee pads. I'm going to tuck my toes, and I'm going to stack my shoulders, hopefully. I'm definitely going to stack my knees over my hips. From there, I'm going to cat cap. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up into an angry cat, and I'll look down at my springs, my carriage, or maybe my knees and thighs, and then I'm going to press my chest forward. Don't scoot your hips back. Press your chest forward, and think of lifting your chest more, because you can really sink into the low back here with lifted arms. And now, tuck your tail, and pull it up, articulate up, up, up into the angry cat. Now, instead of sinking into the low back, think of pressing that chest through your arms more over the foot bar, showing your necklace to the wall in front of you. Tuck your tail and lift, and now one more. And come back to neutral. Sit back, and we're going to face the other side for the side hip lift. After that, we're going to be doing some star work. There's a couple ways to level up on that, but if you're more comfortable with the side hip lift, stay here. It's all a progression at this point. So, again, I have my top, thigh, my top shin pressed against the, uh, the shoulder rest, but my knees are in line with the shoulder block. They're not in front of it or to the outside of it. My arms are lined up with my knees, maybe a little bit in front. I have more weight, my kinky blade edge. This is my side that's super fun to walk me press away from the back where that meeting to. Flip your top palm up over the shoulder block. Squeeze in on your under, squeeze your glutes and lift. Leaving your thighs squeezed together the whole time. And lower and tap. Exhale to lift. And inhale, lower and tap. And exhale the lift. Uh-oh, there it goes, third one, not the best one. And a lower and tap. Now, come back through the center. We're gonna place
place our hands on the foot bar, thumbs pointing with the fingers. I'm going to tuck my toes and press my feet into the shoulder box. Now from there, I'm going to press forward so my shoulders are over my wrists, and I'm going to lift up, squeezing everything towards the midline, and I'm going to hold my plank for a couple seconds. From here, we're going to go into a side plank. One more breath. Now, take my right hand, I'll walk it towards my left, and then I'm going to tandem my feet. So my, on my front foot, I'm standing on the inside of it, and my back foot, I'm standing on the outside. Now, I'm going to press out, bring in my arm to a T, and pull it back down. And press out, arm to a T. Just a little bit, guys, nothing major. Now, if you want to add on, take that top foot, stack it on top of the shoulder block by your top, by your bottom foot, and press out, lift your leg. Otherwise, leave your leg there and just lift your arm. One more. Now tap your foot down, then place it in front. Bring your, as you twist, bring your top arm down. Bring your other arm to the original position. We're going to hold it for a couple seconds again. Just a couple more breaths. Pull that foot bar apart. Now walk the other hand into the other side and rotate your feet in tandem to press it out. Try to bring your shoulder over your wrist and don't sink down in your side. Lift up. Now press out and pull it back in with your underarm. And here's two. We're going to add on in a minute if you're ready. Otherwise, the knee um, press or this start is fine. Take your front foot, stack it on top of the shoulder block on your top foot, on your bottom foot, I'm sorry. Now press. Lift the arm of the leg and start, and tap. Otherwise, you just lift your arm. One more. Bring it in. Bring that foot in front. Bring the hand down. Separate your hands to a plank. We're going to hold it here again. Belly button up and in. Squeeze your glutes. Squeeze your inner thighs. Pull the shoulder blades apart. One more breath. Drop your knees down, touch your toes in the middle of the headrest, sit back on your heels. I like my mermaid up here for a nice chest opener, but you can also place your hands down on the standing platform if you'd like. Now, you can pull yourself up up, up to sitting up tall. Let's start on our closing exercises. We're going to do some mermaid, a little bit of feet and straps, and then some stretching, and then we're going to be done. So I'm going to face you guys first. Whichever way it is on your carriage is great. Same position as we did for the kneeling lift, although my knees are more stacked here because I'm not standing up on my shins, right? I'm going to flip my top hand on top. My bottom hand is closer to my knees, maybe a little bit in front. I have more weight in my pinky blade edge. And I'm going to side bend this time. Up and over. Come back up. Sit up tall, leaving your, your thighs together. And side bend in to the well. And bring your arms to a T. And reach up and over, over the foot bar, towards the springs. Try to leave your thighs together the whole time. Oh, my thighs don't want to stay together right now. They're like, no, I'm so tired. And one more. And bend your elbow in. And come up. And side bend. Now, you can get in to the other side. However you like. My personal favorite is just flipping around. Or you can stand up and walk around your machine like I'm doing now. So, I'm going to set up for mermaid again. I'm going to stack my knees a little bit more here. I'm going to line up my knees with the shoulder rest. My hands are going to be lined with my knees, maybe a little bit in front. I'm more weight my pinky blade edge. My hand over the shoulder block, palms lift up, and I'm going to side bend. Just really enjoying the stretch here. This is active recovery. And side bend over using the peg or the shoulder block to assist the stretch of sliding your shoulder blade down your back. And come up. And side bend over. 
and come up and over and come back up again one more time and final one good from there we are going to put one medium and one light spring on that's one red one blue we're going to take off the heavy spring or the green and we're going to change our handles out for foot straps we're going to leave our headrest down so we're going to do an exercise and go right into short spine and then do one more leg exercise so i'm going to come onto my back find my feet straps press the carriage out both feet bend one leg put the foot strap on press put tension in that strap find the other one put oh uh oh don't come Caught my baby toe. I'm going to bring my legs into a frog with my knees tracking over my big toe. I'm going to scooch away from the shoulder block slightly because we're going to go right into short spine. I'm going to weight my tailbone. I'm going to press out and pull it back in. Now press out at the top and pause and pull it in. And press, pause. See if you can find the same tension in our body that we did at the very beginning of class when we pulled the handles over our sternum 12th thread and really found that tight engagement in the box of the body. Now I'll leave it there. Okay, time for a short spine. Pike in the hips, tuck your tail, articulate up, kind of like we did on long stretch. Bend your knees, coming into a frog, bringing your knees over the shoulder blocks and articulate down, bringing your heels with you the whole time. On this one, I like to stretch out the hamstrings sometimes, like it's fine stretch too. But today, we're gonna frog and find that articulation and the back on short spine. Press, pike, articulate up, squeezing the glutes. Oh, I tried to leave my heels here, did you see? But it's two, two more. Since I did it, if you wanna leave your heels there, don't bring them with you. But begin to articulate and allow your legs to straighten so that you're getting a hamstring stretch down the backs of your legs at the same time. Now to bring your heels down, you're going to hamstring curl your heels towards your glutes. Press the legs out, pike and lift. Now last one, whichever one you want, bring your heels in. I'm going to only work mine where they are in space because my hamstrings are very tight as we just found out. And pull them down. Now from there, I'm going to extend my legs to the ceiling. We're going to do five leg circles in each direction. I'm going to the outside first and pulling it up through the center. Don't allow your tail to lift and don't double click your heels. We're not Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz and we are, uh, are fine with not being home at this point if we are not. So don't allow momentum to take your legs away. And now down through the center and open to the side and come up and down. Resist the spring tension. Don't allow it to just move your legs. See if you can flatten or line your shoulder blades. Two more. All right, bring your legs to parallel, flex your feet and pull down on the straps. Now micro bend your left knee and straighten. Micro bend your right knee and straighten. Micro bend left and straighten. Micro bend right and straighten and left and straighten. Don't allow your hips to lift. Two more to each side. One more to each side. Now go ahead and point your feet. Bring your hands, two fingers to the insides of the straps and open to a straddle stretch. Now I like to gently rock here. Just a tiny little guy. I think it feels really nice. Or go ahead and hold it, but don't bounce it. Now, 
leaving your fingers and bringing, well, actually removing your fingers, but leaving the two fingers and bringing them to the outside. And I like to put my elbows on the inside of my knee. I like to find happy baby with my heels up, to, with my feet up towards the ceiling. I'm going to stamp my feet on the ceiling. My tail is not as heavy as I would like today. Something to work on. Now come into a butterfly. I like to pull all the straps here, but again, I like to use my knee on the inside, my elbows on the insides of my knees if I'm able to. My hips are already pretty tight, so I'm not able to really get it. My hips are pretty tight. Now, if this stretch is accept, or accessible to you, go ahead and stay in the butterfly and dip your feet in towards the springs. This stretch isn't accessible to everyone. Now, bring your feet back up to butterfly. Bring your knees into parallel. Stretch one foot out. Take the strap off. Peg your strap. Begin to bend the knee in the in the foot strap until you can find the foot bar with your unstrapped leg. Take that strap off, peg it, resist the spring tension with the bumper. Come up to sitting. Let's go ahead and take a nice big breath. <sighs> Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. That class was very hard for me. I hope I didn't embarrass myself and I hope that you found it to be a little challenging as well. But if you have any questions or need any modifications, please feel free to reach out. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining me.